Good evening, and thank you for joining me for Friday Night Vespers for First Christian Church, Bellingham, Washington, or wherever you're from. It is Friday, June 5th, and this evening, as we ponder pandemics and protests, our painful history, and a questionable future, it may be good for us to examine our preconceptions about ourselves and about the world around us. In this time of searching for hope, we find that we also need to search for truth. So I'd like us to take some time this evening to consider all of that. So let's start with Proverbs 18.15. An intelligent mind acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. I'm reading tonight from Anne Lamott's book, Almost Everything, subtitled Notes on Hope. And if you can see my book, um, you can probably guess that one of my hopes is that our dog stops eating my books. But that's a topic for another day. So here are these words from her chapter on almost everything. When we are stuck in our convictions and personas, we enter into the disease of having good ideas and being right. My Jesuit friend Tom used to say that he never noticed what he was feeling, only that he was right. We think we have a lock on truth with our burnished surfaces and articulation, but the bigger we pump ourselves up, the easier we are to prick with a pin, and the bigger we get, the harder it is to see the earth under our feet. We all know the horror of having been right, with a capital R, feeling the surge of a cause, whether in politics or custody disputes. This rightness is so hot and steamy and exciting until the inevitable rug gets pulled out from under us. Then we get to see that we almost never really know what is true, except what everybody else knows, that sometimes we're really lonely and hollow and stripped down to our most naked human selves. It is the worst thing on earth, this truth about how little truth we know. I hate and resent it, and yet it is where new life rises from. New life is uncomfortable, nubbly. We like soft and warm. Baby blankets are nice. We also like to wear the fleecy cloak we've made for ourselves, the finery of being right. Why would you take off the cloak voluntarily? It is so comfortable and impressive, at least to you. You let it drop or life yanks it off, and when you notice it's gone, it doesn't feel great. You begin to feel a cold, prickly wind, and people can see your veiny ankles. But what comes in is fresh air on our skin, which startles us awake. We'll never again be as open and vibrational as babies, but maybe now we'll be a little more present and aware. As you bring a close to your week, I invite you to pause for a few moments with me to just breathe and reflect. In these days as we are looking so closely at our nation, at our society in general, I pray that we're also doing a great deal of introspection. This may require that we pause from time to time and take a lot of deep breaths. I invite you to do that now. Maybe even hold your breath from time to time and just think, pray, Reevaluate. Because for those of us who identify as Caucasian, we are being called to question whether our way of being and doing is the right way of being and doing. So this evening, I invite you to breathe in God's Spirit. Let her infuse you with new possibilities and awareness. Breathe out the old ways of going about our lives which cause harm. Breathe in God's hope 
and promise that lives and dwells within each of us, enabling us to celebrate and create good in the world around us. Breathe out. Whatever it is that keeps you safe and comfy holds you back and keeps you from moving into God's future and God's blessings for this creation. Breathe in and feel refreshed and renewed and may spirit walk with you into one great weekend.